I know that underneath it all, I can go this direction, that direction, this direction, or that direction, and I'm not going to get what I truly need until I go to God. My name is Mac Reiner. I play drums for the band August Burns Red. My number one aim is, is, is to know Jesus and to care about what he thinks of me more than anyone else and to have him as number one in my life. I started the band when I was 17 in my basement in Mannheim, Pennsylvania and I have been living on the road for the past um, seven, seven to eight years now. I never would have predicted that my career or even my hobby would have been playing drums in a metal band. Um, I grew up on a farm I had a very normal upbringing, um, great family, great home. I worked as a landscaper and I played drums on the side. And it just so happened that playing drums was something I, I loved to do so much that after a full day of landscaping or school, whatever it was, I came home and I went into my basement, sat down at my drum set, picked up my sticks and played and lost track of time. But something was, something was happening to me where I was just so ambitious about playing drums and it didn't seem like anything was standing in my way. Um, it, things fell into place with August Burns Red. I met up with a few friends in Mannheim, which is the small town I'm from, and it, we, we clicked from the first practice. We got along so well. We liked the same music and we liked the same um, style. And we said, let's, let's start writing music together. And so we did. Um, that was in 2003, and now it's 2013, 10 years later, and I'm still doing it, and I still love it. And I'm surprised on one hand that I still love playing drums, and, and on the other hand, I'm not surprised at all, because um, I believe it's a gift that God's given me, and it's been amazing to see people respond to August Burns Red and even something as simple as playing drums um, all around the world. And I'm just thankful that God gave me this ambition to play. And, and if a metal band's the arena that I'm supposed to be playing in right now, uh, let's do it. You know? Okay, well this is, this is funny to answer because my own family didn't like the way my band sounded. Um, it's very subjective. There are some Christians that believe that hardcore and metal and this style of music is straight from the pits of hell. And what's ironic is I, I don't have a hard time agreeing with them sometimes, you know, just based on the sonic value. When you hear someone screaming, it's not something you imagine to be happening in peaceful, heavenly places. So, while I understand, um, it's just not simply a stereotype that's very true most of the time. So, when people don't understand something, it's easy to be afraid of it. So, a lot of times it's just a matter of showing them the lyrics or showing them Jake and saying, here's the man behind the scream. <laughs> He's awesome, you know, He's a great guy. I promise you there's nothing in him that's, you know, that's worshiping Satan. It sounds abrasive and it sounds rough, but it's really not as, you know, bad as you think it is. My favorite song from August Burns Red lyrically is a song called Meridian. And it's my favorite song because um, it has a verse in it from the book of Jeremiah. And the verse is, um, it says, those who survive the sword will find favor in the desert. And at the time when I wrote it, it, it had a lot of meaning in my life because I was going through things that just seemed to make absolutely no sense. 
And that verse is very reassuring in that it seems to say it, that if you go through the toughest things, that there's a meaning, there's a significance to it. And on the other side, maybe you won't even see why you had to go through the difficult stuff, but it's worth it. It's worthwhile. And the second part of the lyric in the song um, says, I, am the, I will make this mess a masterpiece, essentially. I am the painter making this mess a masterpiece. And I think that's an amazing way of describing how I can look around and maybe all I can see is just, you know, destruction and disaster and, and, um, and adversity, but I'm not God. And it is probably the case that God knows a lot more than me and that he has a design and a reason for why things are the way they are. Um, and so that song is just a reminder of how good God is in spite of how frustrating life can be. Though it's not a song with a lot of lyrics, I think the lyrics in it are, are really you know, significant. It's easy as a kid in a Christian home to accept God because you're told this is God, he's truth, and you need him. And here's the Bible. And so you say, okay, uh, I'm being told this is the truth. Um, and typically you take it as such, okay? And then there's probably a time in your life when you rebel and you say, there's no way this is true. And, I, I, and I'm gonna push it away and run from it in the other direction. But the interesting thing in my life has been the fact that touring has taken me all around the world in you know, many different cultures, many different uh, worldviews, many different religions. And I had a conversation with someone one time where they said, it must be the case that you believe less in God than you ever have because you've been around the world, you've seen all these different religions, you've heard all these people's opinions. How can it be that you believe in a God that's different than someone else's God, and you're saying that your you know, belief in God is more valid than theirs. My response, I think, in general to that thought is that if God says in the Bible that His Son Jesus is the only way to Him, then you can totally agree with that, and you'd say you'd have to have Jesus to get God, or you would have to say that Christianity is wrong altogether. But you couldn't say that Christianity and, say, Hinduism or Buddhism or anything else can run parallel lines to God because there's no room for that in Christianity. And I, I, I think single-handedly, touring has you know, opened my eyes to that more than anything. Because it used to be as a kid, I would think, well, okay, I'm being told that God, you know, the Christian God is the only God. And, the only way to him is Jesus, and so that's easy to accept at face value. But it's much more difficult to believe when you're talking to someone who swears on their life that, you know, their God is the true God. And you're looking at a human being. You know, you're looking at someone that might as well be you. And they're saying the same thing as you, just about, you know, their respective God. And it makes you really question why you believe what you believe. So... My faith and my relationship in God has changed drastically over the years, but I would have to say it's deeper and richer and more robust than it's, it's ever been in my life. Well, I want to say my greatest goal is to have a family that I can pass my legacy on to. And, um, but the more, but the more I think about that, the the less I think it would do for me. Family, while it's very important to me, and I would almost say the most important thing in my life, um, I'd have to say the, the you know the greatest goal, the greatest aim that I could possibly have is to know Jesus and to put His opinion of me higher than anyone else's. Because um, if that's the case, then when I'm on my deathbed, it will be a lot easier to grieve the loss of family as I leave them or they leave me. If Jesus is my savior and he's my comforter, then to not have Jesus as number one and see someone in my life go that I care about very much and 
them not being able to help me grieve because they're passing away. So my number one aim is, is, is to know Jesus and to care about what he thinks of me more than anyone else and to have him as number one in my life. From personal experience, when I've struggled with trying to feel God and find Him, figure out where He is and why don't I feel Him or see Him working in my life, I think the, I think the easiest thing to do is just to ignore the spiritual part of your life, to ignore your heart or the soul aspect of your life. But I think that Number one, that's impossible to do because I think everyone has something built in them innate that says you need something more than everything you see around you. You can uh, play sports to the best of your ability. You can play this instrument to the best of your ability. You can you know, succeed in your job and become a millionaire. You can have the best family in the world. But none of those things are going to give you what in the bottom of your heart you really need. But thanks be to Jesus, we have access um, to everything we need because of his sacrifice on the cross. And so I think all leading up to that point, when I'm not feeling God and I'm feeling so distant from anything that's godly or holy or, you know, encouraging and hopeful, I have found myself coming back to my faith most easily when I think about Jesus and the sacrifice on the cross. And to the, to the degree I know him, and I realize how much he loves me and how much he did for me on that cross is the degree to which I understand no matter what I'm going through and no matter how distant God feels, his love for me is still there. I mean, the Bible promises, draw near to God and I'll draw near to you. It's a promise. There, there are endless promises about God's love and affection and his pursuit of us. Um, in Matthew it says, knock and the door will be open. You know, seek and you'll find. And if you believe in the Bible, and if you believe in God and you believe that it's, that the Bible is the infallible word of God, then you have to say that God is always there and he's always pursuing us. And life is full of seasons. And next week it might be tough. And I don't want to pray. I don't want to read the Bible. I don't want to do anything with God. But I know that underneath it all, I can go this direction, that direction, this direction, or that direction, and I'm not going to get what I truly need until I go to God.